playing back high resolution footage on your computer is tough, especially for older computers. And the resolutions just keep getting higher. But even working with 4K footage from the Pocket Cinema camera, sometimes my computer will hiccup. Playing back raw codecs, adding color grading, any effects, things like that just makes it worse. The good news is Resolve has some ways to tackle this. If you look at, here's a rough analogy of what's going on. When you play back, let's say just raw footage, Blackmagic Design Raw, it's a great codec, but it still requires some work from your computer to play back. And it's like your computer's processing complicated calculus problems, right? You hit play in your timeline, and it hits the first clip, and it's got all this math to do. That's not exact, but you get it. Well, when we do different things like render cache, optimize media, and proxy files, it's like we're performing the calculations, or at least some of them, ahead of time. So when you hit play in your timeline, your computer looks at the first clip, and the answers are already there. So it just has to play it. And so that can make playing back high-resolution footage on older computers very doable. And this is an, an exact analogy for every function that we're going to look at, but that'll just give you an idea. So again, we're going to look at render cache, which that really applies to, optimize media, and then in the next, in a lesson or two, we'll talk about proxy files. So let's get to it. Rendering is really easy to turn on. We've looked at the settings briefly in your project settings, but let's go back in there really fast. Just click the gear icon here in the lower right, and then on master settings, scroll down to optimize media and render cache. And we're looking at render cache format first. So I told you, if you're on Mac, set this to ProRes 422LT or ProRes 422. And if you're on Windows, some flavor of DNX, LB, or SQ. And then you want to have a check here, enable background caching after two seconds. Basically what's going on is if you're not playing the timeline or editing or during doing certain functions in Resolve for a period of two seconds, then it's going to start caching. And then down in the working folders, cache files location is where the answers, if you will, to all of the mathematics are kept. So remember, don't store this on your local computer drive. You want this on an external drive, wherever you're keeping your movie. Or ideally, if you have a separate SSD drive, like for example, I have a two terabyte SSD drive that I have as a backup for my pocket cinema camera. Well, it's really fast. So if you have a Thunderbolt connected SSD drive, you can set your cache stuff to go there and just create a Resolve folder. Remember, Resolve will create the cache clip part of that. So once you've set these things, click save, unless you didn't change anything, just cancel out. And then up on the top, go to playback, render cache, smart. And that's going to tell Resolve to render what it thinks it needs to render for smooth playback. In fact, let me turn mine off really fast. If I set to none, okay, here's my timeline. It's gonna play the raw footage. My computer's playing it fine. But if it wasn't, I could go to playback, render cache, smart, and you're gonna see a blue line appear here. Now, that's because I've already rendered all of this. If it wasn't rendered, this line would be red. So for example, let me make an edit. I'll blade tool that, delete that part, and then bring this back and see that red. That's not rendered yet, but there we go. Now it's rendered. So that's how you tell if it's rendered and ready to go. And so this makes sense. If we go to Finder, I'm gonna to go to my external drive and go to Resolve Cache, and there it is, Cache Clip. And here's the render files. See, they're cryptic DVCC files, okay? And here's the good news. You can toast this folder and delete all those files and nothing bad will happen. So I'm gonna drag that to trash. Now if I go back here, I see, look, media offline, because it's trying to read the cache files. Resolve thinks they're still there, but I deleted them. So what can you do? I'm just gonna highlight my clips, go to playback, delete render cache, selected clips. Now that's going to tell it to re-render them. So there we go, the render's done. And if I go back to Finder, look, the cache clip folder is back. Cool. And if I play this now, that error message is gone in my timeline viewer. If you wanna see how much space your cache files are taking up, you can of course go to Finder and just get info on that folder and it's gonna tell you, it's over four gigs. Or within Resolve, I can go to Playback, Delete Render Cache, Manage Cache Data. It's gonna show my various projects and which projects are using cache files. Right now it's just this one, post-production one, which is what we're in, over four gigs. I could check this and say Clear Cache and then close that and you can see this is turned red again. And then also, if you're ever experiencing any kind of funky issues like with a title or weird issues with color grading, just anything visually that's not right, it could be corrupt cache files. So whenever that happens, let's say this clip wasn't playing correctly. 
I would just highlight it like it is and go to Playback, Delete Render Cache, Selected Clips. And now it's gonna re-render that clip and that will most of the time fix weird issues like that. And then anytime you wanna not use the cache that's created, just go to Playback, Render Cache and set it to None. And then go to Playback, Delete Render Cache and you can tell it to delete all of it, what's unused, like maybe you had stuff in the timeline that you've removed but there's still cache from that. It'll delete that or it's selected clips which we've already looked at. Now there's another type of rendering called Render in Place and it's different. I, I don't recommend using it but I need to show you what it is because you'll see it in the menu. So if I control click, right click on any clip, Render in Place is a menu item. And when I click on that, it brings up a box like this where it's asking for format, codec, and quality. We haven't talked about codecs yet. We're gonna do that in a couple lessons. But this is basically the container. It's a QuickTime file. And this is the codec, and this is the quality of that codec. And once I specify these things and click Render, it's going to ask me where I wanna create that file. So if I go to Resolve Cache, and I already have a folder I created called Render in Place for this example. So I'm gonna double click on that and click Open and then it completed. So how is this different than the other rendering? Well, for example, let me go back to playback, render cache, smart, and you'll see the blue line isn't over this file anymore. Why? Because this file is no longer a raw clip. It's been replaced with the QuickTime I just created. So if I go to my resolve cache folder, render in place, you'll see it's an actual file that we can play, but it's not at the high resolution that the raw files are at. So this would not work for final delivery of your movie or for color grading or anything like that, because if you color grade this, you're color grading that file, not the actual raw footage. And the color grading will respond radically differently. It just doesn't work, you can't do it. So why would you ever use this? The only thing I can think of is if you have a film where you have maybe a lot of effects and you just can't get it to playback any other way, or you just need to get a timeline in a place where it'll playback smoothly on any computer, so you can go through here and get it to play back. But that's really the only scenario I can think of. When you're dealing with a normal render, you're still dealing with the raw footage. And so it's radically different. Now, if you did do a render in place and you want to get back to normal, you can control click or right click again and choose decompose to original. And now you can see the red line here. It's the raw footage again, and then it's going to do the normal render like the rest of the timeline. So again, I don't ever recommend using render in place. I don't think you ever need to, especially with proxy files and such, but that's what that is all about. So that's rendering in a nutshell. And there's another way to do render cache. It's the user mode. And we're gonna talk more about that when we're doing the color grading course. So that's it for now. Now let's talk about optimized media. Optimized media is another way to help with playback. And here's how it works. If you go to your project settings again, back to optimized media and render cache, you can see that you can choose optimized media resolution and format. So I'm working with 4K footage, but I could say, hey, cut that in half, make it 2K. And that's still gonna be fine for my editing, but it's gonna be much easier for my computer to play back. And then I can also specify the quality. Do I want ProRes 422 or 422LT, or one of the DNX HR, HD codecs, et cetera. And so with those things set, you don't specify a location because it automatically puts these things in the cache files location folder. We'll look at that in a second. But once you set those things, go ahead and save, or if you didn't change anything, just click cancel. And then here's how this works. You just highlight the clips you wanna create optimized media for, control click or right click, generate optimized media. And now under playback, I'm going to say none for render cache, and then I'm gonna check use optimized media if available. And if we go look at Finder to our Resolve Cache folder, Cache Clip, here's the optimized media folder. And that's where all the files are located. And if we don't want to use the optimized media at any point, just go back to Playback, uncheck Use Optimized Media if available. So it's very straightforward. Now let's do a little test. Let's go to Resolve Cache and delete the Cache Clip folder entirely. And now I'm going to generate optimized media again. In fact, let's Let's set it to half and to ProRes 422, save, and then generate optimized media. Great. Now I'm gonna go back to project settings for render cache format. I'm gonna set that to 422, click save. Now that's gonna be at full 4K, you can't change that. But then go to playback, render cache, smart, and let it cache those files.
Okay, now let's go to my external drive and let's compare. The optimized media folder is 505 megs. The cache folder is 3.4 gigs. Interesting. So right away I see we're taking a lot less space with the optimized media. So that's kind of nice, right? But here's the thing. If I get the scene cut together, get my movie cut together, and then I want to go to grade my footage, so I jump over to the color grading page, I can't grade the optimized media. That's not going to work very well. Whereas with caching, I can work with my color grading and be grading the raw files themselves. And we're going to talk about that more when we're in the color grading course. So even though optimized media is taking a lot less space and I can run at 2K, resolution and it's really nice for playback. I'm always using the normal render cache and smart mode while I'm editing and then I'll jump to other modes when I'm doing color grading. But if you want to use optimized media for any reason, you saw how simple it is, just make sure this is checked and if you don't want to use that, uncheck it and you can jump in and delete those files. Hey listen, if you like this training, you should really check out my film school, Write and Direct. It's an online film school designed for one thing, to help aspiring directors realize their dreams faster than normal education routes. What do I mean by that? Well, I did the traditional thing. I went to film school in Los Angeles and it was great, it was fun, I learned a lot, but it cost a lot of money. And here's the thing, when you graduate from film school, pick your school, it doesn't matter. That is not going to land you a job in Hollywood, at least not a job as a director, okay? Hollywood doesn't care about where you went to school. What they do care about is what movies you have actually directed and were they any good, okay? So what do you do if you spend a lot of money on school and you're kind of tabbed out and then you realize that the only way forward is to begin directing movies and it's on your dime? Well, that's a kind of a scary place to be. And that's why you'll see a lot of people in LA working at restaurants and stuff because they're trying to make ends meet, they're trying to pursue their dreams and it's tough. Write and Direct helps you sidestep some of this, all right? I teach you, not only did I go to film school, but I've been, I've been working in independent film for years since then, and I've worked on studio films, and I teach you how to do a movie from development through post-production. We cover everything in granular detail so that you are equipped to pursue your dreams faster than I was able to, than so many other aspiring filmmakers. So check it out, writedirect.co. I really hope to see you there, and if not there, I'll see you here on the channel very soon.